Prosecution of criminal acts. Somebody commits a criminal act, are they automatically arrested and tried? Well, that takes us to this week's case. It involves a young man in Manassas City, Virginia. You may have heard about this case. 17-year-old fellow. And he was involved in sexting with his 15-year-old girlfriend. He took pictures of his genitals. He texted them to her. She sent some photos back to him. He was then prosecuted for possessing child pornography and for the production of child pornography. The prosecutor, as the case was going forward, asked for a continuance in the trial so that the prosecutor could serve a warrant requiring a nude photograph of the accused with an erection. They already had nude photos of him, but he did not have an erection in the nude photos they already had. So they made that known that that was going to be done. The police showed some uneasiness on this. Nonetheless, a warrant was compiled, was given to the police to execute. Well, there was a significant hue and outcry about the fact that this young man would be taken, that he would be taken to a hospital, injected, and that he would then have to have a nude photo of him with an erection. The police weren't happy about this, and the police there in Manassas City said we normally and we generally never execute a warrant of this nature, particularly in a case of this nature. Well, as a result of hue and outcry, the district attorney's office began to back off. The police never executed the warrant, and therefore the evidence was never produced. Okay, so what does this case demonstrate and what do we learn from it? Something very important that I think a lot of people aren't aware of. When it comes to criminal prosecution, there are a lot of decisions that are made along the way. When a police officer picks up somebody for a driving violation, that police officer may or may not give the person a ticket. When somebody is stopped because they are having an open container of alcohol on the street, the police officer may arrest them, may not arrest them. Once the police officer conducts an arrest, then the booking takes place. Then the case is reported to the district attorney's office. There an assistant district attorney will look at it and the assistant district attorney will decide whether or not it's a case to go forward. Another point at which a decision is made. If the di assistant district attorney decides to take the case forward or to drop the case, there generally is going to be a consideration within the district attorney's office as to whether that should be done and sometimes political decisions will be made here. I mean, if we're dealing with a situation in a particular part of town where there are a lot of open containers and there's rowdiness and public drunkenness, well, there the open container law may be vigorously enforced. So the point of this is, and what we learn from this is, each point along the way, decisions are made in a criminal case. From the time of the arresting officer, to the time of the assistant DA, to the time of the DA's office generally. And at each of those cases, that judgment of the individual that was making that decision will come into play. So it is not a seamless, automatic process whereby somebody commits a criminal act and automatically goes to trial. No, lots of decisions are made along the way. And those decisions decide whether or not that case does go to trial. Hey, we bring you this as we bring you cases every week so you understand how the law works. I'm David Allen.